Hey folks, Dave here, and welcome back to some long overdue Fallout 4. I actually have a little mini settlement tour for you guys. This is not going to be a let's build episode, we're actually going to tour something that's completely finished. Although, I still want to have a bit of let's build at the end of the video, so you guys can see how I put this thing together, and some of the challenges that I had to you know get around to get this thing going. We're here at Jamaica Plain, and as you guys can see, I am not wearing my General Dave uniform. What that usually means is I'm going to be infiltrating something, looking at something going on that's kind of underhanded. I have a mod installed that expanded the build area, so we're not going to be looking at the original traditional uh, stock game settlement part here at Jamaica Plain, because I really haven't touched that since the month the game launched, I think, in 2015. Instead, I've built something down here at the end of the street here with what was originally just a shell of an empty house. I've created a smuggler's cache with a general store as a front for the operation and we're going to see how this uh, whole smuggling deal is going down here at Jamaica Plain. People now as we walk over to, to start the tour, I want to give you guys a heads up. I am going to be pretty quiet in a lot of this commentary because much of this was recorded after the baby had fallen asleep, so I was trying to be extra quiet, so just bear with the soft-spokenness of much of this video. Before we head over to take a close look, here's what things looked like before. It was pretty undetailed, uh, kind of just blank part of town. So before building the smuggler's cache, I first added some props to make this part of the neighborhood look like it had been pretty overgrown before the war, and then uh, you know, when the bombs fell, a lot of these trees fell as well, tearing this house up and making it not very valuable for new settlers to move in after the apocalypse. But that's why this has been chosen by these smugglers as the center of their operations. So as you guys can see, it's got a bit of a haunted house look going on, but there is an actual legit trader who has set up as a front here at this house. It's kind of far away from the rest of the settlement, as you guys can see from this overview of the finished build right here. It's off in the corner, and it really is the spooky rundown house at the end of the street. It reminds me of a house out of It or something. If you were to come by anyway and decide to visit this trader, despite their pretty crappy establishment, you can tell that this is also a carpenter trader. They're working to gather a lot of scrap material from these rundown houses that are all over this part of the neighborhood. And they're going to be selling shipments of wood scrap and supplies, plenty of junk to be harvested around here. But as you guys can see, this house is overall just really, really run down. The war was uh, not kind whatsoever. It's a pretty terrible location to set up shop. Corner of town and really just run down. I did like this junk in a box, uh, thrift and salvage. I almost called it theft and salvage with that font, which I guess also kind of works. Open 8 to 4, not Sundays. Also, general trader, but Got work to do, specializing find. in carpentry and wood reclamation and wood scrap. Oh, hello. Yeah, one of our craftsmen there going by. Even their power source is a uh, super junky generator just chugging away there. Before we head inside to look at this fake general store covering up this smuggling operation, let's give a thank you to the sponsor of this video, Ben Q. They sent me over the BenQ screen bar. This is a new USB powered light for your desktop. What this lets you do is light up your keyboard, your mouse area, your desk, and in my case, a lot of the notes that I'm making and working on as I'm working on these settlement builds, but it's a light that doesn't cast reflection or glare on your screen. It's kind of wild how well this thing works. I work from home full time outside of YouTube, so I'm at my desk a lot, but this light actually makes my desktop usable for when I'm taking notes and working on other stuff uh, right there right in front of me. The light bar uses super responsive touch buttons and you can completely change the brightness as well as the color temperature. This thing is pretty slick guys. Check out the link in the description if you want to know more about this BenQ light bar and thank you to them for sponsoring this video. Let's go ahead and take a look inside. 
as you guys can see, this general store is not really offering a bunch of things for sale here. They are offering those shipments of wood for a pretty good price, 250 caps for other settlers who want to uh, work on building some stuff. And they're also at least keeping up the appearances of being, you know, very loyal Minutemen yes. citizens with the Minutemen posters there. But notice that a lot of the goods they're selling are just housewares, basic supplies, uh, a little bit of ammo maybe, but no guns, no explosives, no anything to raise suspicion or attract attention, just, you know, basic supplies and uh, wood scraps and texture glitches. That is tripping me out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Moving on. Ooh. Yeah, definitely keeping up the appearances of being a proper Minutemen settlement, but it's what's behind the curtains back here, you know, in the dangerous uh, craftsman workspace area that really gives the hint that something's not quite right here in this store. I mean, it's pretty common to have, yes, you know, employee-only restricted areas, even in the apocalypse for your workshop. One odd thing back here is that one of the primary well-lit workspaces for working on this scrap lumber is kind of huh? too clean. It's kind of unused. Looks like somebody's been mainly just sitting back here smoking, chain smoking even, instead of actually working on putting some of this scrap together for sale. The place is uh, kind of a mess too for an active workspace. Still lots of debris from the half-destroyed house. Uh, still piled up. They've patched some of the windows and doors and stuff like that to keep the drafts out and to you know, keep thieves out too probably, but the roof is still full of leaky tarps and holes everywhere. It's just uh, it's just a big old mess. As we go back here, yeah, she's just kind of going to be hanging out watching the terminal. Yes. That's a pretty heavy duty shotgun for this small junky general store as well for defense but general dave over prepares so i'm not gonna call that super suspicious caught for sleeping here in the back everything just kind of boarded up <laughs> didn't even bother to clean up the previous owner there just left him piled up in the corner and over here somebody is going through some of the previous owner's possessions it looks like they had a pretty solid book collection on this nice little alcove. And this is where General Dave's network of spies and informants inside of his Minutemen Empire really comes together because we have intelligence that if you hit just the right key combination on the terminal and hit a hidden button here on the bookcase a secret smuggler storage area is revealed. These are the actual goods that these guys are peddling. And I got to thinking when designing this little uh, smuggler's nook, how would this actually work in this partially abandoned house? Well, the first thing I thought of is it's got to be light proof. They're gonna have a good light in here for you know, logging and categorizing and selling all of their smuggled goods, but you don't want any light leaking out of this garage. You want it to look like this garage is destroyed. So lots of tarps and covers to help hide that light. When designing the build here with this smuggling cache, I got to thinking, how would smuggling things in and out of all of these Minutemen settlements really work? And I think the answer to that is a lot of things are gonna be smuggled out of these settlements, not just in. Sure, there's illegal drugs and stuff like that that's going to come in, but I think a lot of the materials that you see here are stuff from Minutemen armories and supply depots. After all, if the Minutemen have so much power now in the Commonwealth, odds are tons of this stuff is flowing out of the new Minutemen government and into the hands of smugglers. If you look on the wall of armor available here, there's even a counterfeit version of General Dave's uniform up for sale. Uh, shadow casting lights for that extra immersive lighting conditions inside of the smuggler's nook here but 
I'm gonna cut on my flashlight just so we can see some of the stuff being moved back and forth here. Yeah, lots of rockets. I imagine right there you've got some kind of uh, illegal meats or perhaps even drugs being smuggled into the settlements. Lots of uh, stolen medical gear from the Minutemen and some pristine medical supplies and food and drink too. Just stuff that uh, is usually top shelf and quite expensive smuggled from the coffers of the new uh, Minutemen headquarters at Sanctuary Hills, I would imagine. Then you have some stuff like Medex and Jet being manufactured elsewhere and brought in for sale to people who are living inside of the Minutemen settlements. And you also have, I mean, guns and ammo, but that stuff sold all over the official channels inside of the Minutemen settlements. This stuff, though, is kind of more eyebrow raising. You've got lots of mini nukes, lots of rockets, stuff that uh, would definitely get you some attention if you were just ordering it from the gun shop down the street in the Minutemen uh, different settlements across the Commonwealth. This is the kind of stuff you can buy with all this extra ammo and all the upgrades, all the bells and whistles without having to attract any attention. Quite a few armors for sale. I imagine some of that comes from uh, the armories as well as just uh, robbing people out in the wasteland, whatever's handy. Got some top shelf, literal top shelf liquors with a screen there to help them uh, not fall off. Again, lots of medical supplies and quite a few guns. And you also have this flamer turret here. I'm not sure if you guys saw it, but way up there on the rafters, you've got that security camera, which can be watched from the terminal in the next room. And if somebody breaks in to rob this place, this is basically mutually assured destruction. You still have the uh, oil slicks in here from it being a garage, lots of flammable materials around. This whole place would just go up. Hiding the evidence. Make it look like an industrial accident of some kind with all these explosives lying around. A nice way to have mutually assured destruction for any possible thieves, but also a way to cover up your tracks if you've got to just level the whole place and cover up what you've been doing. And look at that. Somebody has even stolen Where's my crouch key? There we go. I'm on a controller here. <laughs> Someone's even stolen some of General Dave's holiday eggnog. That has to bring a premium. Lots of uh, money and caps being smuggled as well. And even, yeah, this is not kosher for a Minutemen <laughs> general store. Human body parts for experiments as well. We got the back door barred, so we're going to just take that off so we can continue the tour. Ow. So out back here, as you guys can see, cut my light back on, it's pretty overgrown. And when goods aren't being smuggled in, you have these uh, pieces of scrap wood. I mean, this is supposed to be a woodworking settlement. They're just pushed over that garage door, making it look like we can't get inside, but you still got the traps there, so if anybody's trying to break in from the back, you can hear them coming. And of course, you also have one last security camera right here on the back of the house to keep an eye on the drop-off points, which we're going to look at here in a second, and the approach to the back of the house. Although, all of this is just running off of that one junkie generator, so if you take that out, odds are your attack might be a bit more successful. As you guys can see, it's really overgrown back here. So with your light turned off, and you know, if you're not really looking for this path to the back door, you do have to kind of crouch to get those goods in. Uh, it does look overgrown until you turn this corner right here and you realize you can kind of get underneath to get those goods inside the garage. And again, we have some explosive traps if they have to use them. But this is the other part of the smuggling operation. Let's just, uh, Hop up the rock here. This is a pretty open highway outside of the Jamaica Plain settlement. And most of the sight lines from the rest of the Minutemen areas are pretty blocked off here. So what happens is if these smugglers are expecting a shipment, they're going to put a 
uh, white chalk mark here on the telephone pole. And our traveler, our smuggler, can just duck off the side here and slide down this rock, staying, again, low, hidden, out of sight. Hop down here and place the shipment inside of the smuggler's crate or inside of the truck cab. And then the smuggler making the drop off adds a small chalk mark there to the door to let the camera know that there's a pickup ready to go if they didn't actually see it being dropped off. So that's how the goods come back and forth. Then uh, in the cover of darkness, they'll come out and uh, quietly sneak those goods back into the cache. So guys, there you have it. This was intentionally a smaller build, although in uh, true General Dave settlement fashion, I spent way longer on this than I initially planned. And this video is uh, quite a few days later than I had planned it going live, but I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, rather micro detailed build. And we're gonna kinda switch things up here and do things in reverse. Now that we've toured it, I'm gonna run you guys through just a couple of highlights of how I put this build together, a couple of the challenges of figuring out how things were gonna work and how we got to what you just saw there. So let's go ahead and roll the Let's Build footage now. Got a few clips here from right when I was getting started with this thing. Uh, you can see a closer ground detail view of uh, just how blank this part of town was. I think they were out of uh, memory overhead for this part of town, so this is not very detailed at all. Just your suburban house, but I really wanted to give it some post-war trees, quite a few, to give it that spooky house from it feeling, uh, which would make it a great choice for setting up a smuggler operation, but not a great choice for setting up a general store if that had actually been what these new owners had wanted to do with it. You can see there I hadn't even unlocked the settlement build limit at this location, which might make this the last settlement that I haven't unlocked the build limit for yet in the whole game. Yeah, lots of tree placing and figuring out how I was going to disguise the hidden cache here at this house. A big part of that really came in with the vehicles. The truck was already in the garage, but I decided to flip that truck onto its side to help block the garage door, which would have been done you know, by the smugglers after they moved in. And I figured that vault tech van would have been crashed there uh, at some point during the war. Even then, you guys can kind of see me thinking just as I'm running around here, I was like, okay, these vehicles are not going to be enough to block whatever lights I have inside. So uh, that's what began the great tarp placement of 2020. I spent probably a couple of hours just placing tarps and stuff around these different lights, trying to figure out what's the best way to make this look like it was naturally built up by the smugglers uh, to block these lights. And then you got the wood around back that can be pushed, you know, over the door. It's all these little details, I think, that really make these uh, locations have a story that you can tell. And even if I wasn't explaining it to you guys, I think you could find this location. And if you were to find that hidden door, I think the location, for the most part, really does speak for itself. Um, which is, you know, what you go for. You want the, really at this point, level design <laughs> to speak for itself. This is almost a bit beyond settlement building, but it's still a lot of fun to come up with these ideas and how cool is it that this game you know, supports this level of creativity thanks to all these awesome mods. Place Everywhere is a lifesaver, but also uh, CVC has become my go-to mod for tons of this stuff. Now, as you guys can see, as I was still figuring out how I wanted the hidden door to work, I was using that old door from Homemaker without any of the books on it. Uh, I've used that before, so I really wanted to avoid using it this time because I think the lack of books gives it away. And sure enough, thankfully by the end, I was able to find uh, a better bookshelf. And what's funny is, it's actually the bookshelf door right there on the left with all the stuff on it. That's actually a door. I thought it was just a prop, even though each time I selected it, it said door. But I wouldn't realize until right before I was going to start recording the final tour that uh, the detailed bookcase actually was still a door. So that worked out nicely. With kind of the main mechanics in place of how I wanted this thing to uh, work with the hidden door, I started finally placing some of these final details, which 
ended up being nowhere close to final. Again, this went way over the time that I had set out myself to work on it. The small graffiti, the small signs, the small bits of debris and you know objects there in the vault. It's all that little stuff all together that really makes these builds convincing. But also, no floating supports. So as you guys are gonna see here, I went through, made a pass, made sure that there was no pillars that were floating, that everything was well supported. Then I went up to the roof to add our final layer of these uh, broken down tree branches that would have been blown over during the war. This was kind of fun too, to help hide some of those tarps. I added some of this uh, grass work on the rooftop, like you know, moss and stuff has been growing there because of all the leaves building up. And there you have it guys, that is how this build came together. I would say probably at least 13 or 14 hours, a lot more than I had intended. I was expecting this to be like a, I should have known better. I was thinking like a five or six hour build and it was at least double that. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.